Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. Today we celebrate Thomas Sunday. And this is the first Sunday after the resurrection of the Lord. In the Gospel of St. John, where this, when, where this incident happened and to be recorded and for us to read it, there is a certain way St. John wrote this chapter, chapter 20, chapter 20. And the rest of the apostles writing about the resurrection, they wrote it in a certain way. They didn't write everything, but wrote certain, but wrote th certain things. So let's go and, and review the stories quickly. And I'm interested to show you something very, very important in this. Because sometimes when we read the, the Bible, especially the Gospels, and we don't know where the Gospel writers want, where, where they're going with it, it's very difficult for us to understand what are these things meant. One of the most difficult ones to answer is, why did Jesus was not showing himself? clearly except in the upper room this is a question that you would come to find in the gospels for for mary magdalene exam, example of that we had listened to the gospel of the resurrection in the church about mary magdalene going to the tomb very eager to see jesus but it seems like jesus was a little cold although he revealed himself to her and told her um, mary by her name and she realized who he is in the icons, even the Eastern Orthodox icons, you would have him doing this. Don't hold me. In the other Gospels, it says that the, the Marys, the women, held to his feet after the resurrection. It seemed like Jesus was not very approachable. He is recognizable sometimes, but not approachable. So Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb, and, and then she finds... The, and then in the other gospel says that the event of raising the stone from the door of the tomb, moving it, happened in front of them with the angels. And everybody's scared, including the women. And the angel had to comfort the, the woman says, don't be afraid, you, I'm here to scare the soldiers in a way. But then they, uh, they go back and tell the disciples and the disciples don't believe them. You see that from St. Luke Gospel when the two disciples on the, to Emmaus telling Jesus, we don't believe them, they're uh, hallucinating. But then, as they stand there, St. Mary Magdalene doesn't want to leave the tomb at all. She didn't. Everybody else left, she stayed. And then Jesus appears to her. And it seems like from the other Gospels there were other women with her, but she was the main player in this scene. When Jesus appeared to her, and she doesn't know who he is. Very, very strange. I mean, every one of the disciples know who Jesus is. Every, in fact, everybody in Jerusalem and Galilee know who Jesus is. They have seen him many times. These especially, St. Mary Magdalene has been with him. How can you not realize your father, mother, brother, sister? It's crazy. But she couldn't tell who he is. And many people have tried to explain this in many ways. I don't believe it. I don't believe any of it. So she said, she thought in herself, she looked at him carefully and said, maybe he's the, the gardener. So she said, sir, if you, can, if you had taken his body, tell me where you put him. Don't trouble yourself by bringing him. I'll go and bring the body. I'll take care of it. Then Jesus said it, Mary. And he said it in a way very clearly that revealed who he is, in a way that she's familiar with. And that, that's why she responded, Rabboni my teacher, the greatest of all the teachers. And apparently, but is not described to us, she ran to give him a hug. Because the response of Jesus is this, do not hold me. But you have a job to do at this moment. Go tell my disciples about the resurrection. Then Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. Now we have in the same, maybe later, maybe a couple of hours later, two disciples in a different place going to Emmaus. And the Gospel of Luke, that not, that's not John, that's another disciple, is telling us they were going to Emmaus, which is approximately seven miles away from Jerusalem. And they're walking. 
you know, if you've been to the Holy Land, you know it's a hilly country. It's up and down. Roads are not really perfect, so you're going to have to walk carefully. So seven miles, how long would it take for us to walk not jogging and not rushing? It's going to be a long walk. Seven miles is a long walk. So how long would it take for somebody who is traveling to go at ease, not rushed? Uh, they say, say it again, three to four hours. They say uh, a good, healthy man would walk two and a half hours, two and a half miles an hour. So that's walking, brisk walking on a flat place where no ups and downs. So I would say more than three hours. So uh, Jesus apparently outside the, the, the walls of Jerusalem, as they crossed the walls, going from the upper room in Jerusalem and going north, and west, northwest, that's a maze. And then they start walking, and then they found this person walking next to them. And he, uh, they said they couldn't see him. St. Paul says they couldn't recognize who he is. Again, which is again very weird. Do you think they don't know him? No, they do. So uh, he looked at them. And they uh, looked back and said, so what are, what's wrong? Why are you uh, going walking down? They were like, their, shong, their, their shoulders are hung low and their heads are looking down and they are seeming very, very depressed and sad. Why, why are you sad, he said. And they looked at him. Cleopas and the other disciples, there's a custom in the Gospels that the writer of the Gospel doesn't write his name. So apparently it was Luke. So it was Cleopas and Luke, they were going there. And they looked at him and said, Okay, are you uh, a stranger in Jerusalem living by yourself? You even have no, don't have a roommate who told you what happened? And he, so he said to them, so what happened? Very ironic question. And they started telling him about what happened to him. Jesus wanted them to tell him how they saw the things that happened. They walk like this and talk for three hours. Three hours full hours. Couldn't recognize the sound, couldn't recognize the face, couldn't recognize anything. Until they reach Emmaus. And then when they reach there, they get into the house, and he pretended as if he's going somewhere else, further. But they, with, with the generosity of the countryside, they said, no, 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 you cannot leave. Stay with us. Abide with us. It's a sunset. Where are you going to go in the dark, find some food or, and rest? Come and rest. You've been walking with us for all this time. And they... It says they uh, almost forced him. So he stayed. They brought out the bread. They have it in the bag, most probably, into this house they got into. And they, uh, they give it to him as the custom. You have a, a guest. He, he does the blessing, especially if he is um, a, a gentleman who looks like very uh, pious or godly. Because he was talking to them about all the prophecies. So they understood that he was a rabbi. He sat, he sat with them, and then he gave thanks and broke the bread, and he gave it to them. When he did this, all of a sudden their eyes were open, and they said, it's you. As they were, I can imagine that's what they said, and they, they got this big sigh. <gasps> I'm sure. As they were doing this, what happened? Jesus whoosh, disappears completely out in, in thin air. So now, the, I can imagine looking at each other and saying, there's nothing else to do now but to do what? To go back and tell the rest. Because they are very confused about what the women were saying. So let's tell them what really is happening. He is real. He's a risen. He is truly risen. That's what they're going to say to the apostles. So I imagine them going back running. So they took the, the distance in three hours. I'm thinking they took it in an hour and a half. They arrived there by five o'clock or maybe six, at time of supper. They, uh, they knocked on the door. The, uh, the door was closed. Why the door was closed? The gospel told us that the rest of the apostles were very afraid of the Jews. They said if they managed to do this to him and they want to really eradicate everything he had done, they would have to finish us. In this doing, Jesus actually had managed to take the church, his church, out of the Jewish culture. To take it completely out. That's a Passover. Imagine the Israelites coming out of Egypt. 
the church, the Christian church has to be coming out of the Israelite culture, religion, everything. So there was a, a separation, very, very clear separation. You're a Christian, you're risking your life to die at the hands of the Jews. So they go in and they are so excited. He is risen, he is risen, truly he is risen. And everybody says, oh yeah, yeah, we know, we know. Peter had seen him. So not much, just Mary Magdalene. Uh, that's a little, a little uh, um, sexist there. They said, Peter seen him. So Mary had told you that she had seen him already. So they know that, they, they, that he had been seen by, by Mary Magdalene and now by the two disciples and by Peter. As they were debating and excited, they don't know what to say and the rest of them is just very confused. One person was not there yet, neither in the morning nor in the afternoon. That's Thomas. So as they were talking, the doors again, again, the Gospels, all, maybe two of the four, said that the doors were closed. The doors were shut. And we're going to ask about this in a second. So uh, all of a sudden, again, out of thin air, Jesus just appears. And it says they were shocked. And Jesus' response tells us why were, they were shocked. The response was, touch me. I am not a ghost. Because they were thinking, that, that looks like him. And where did he come from? Then he must be a... The, the, res, the response that he must be a ghost means that they recognized him. They recognized him. All of them. And the response of Jesus says, I am not a ghost. Do not be afraid. I am he. I'm he. And he says, touch me. Hold me. Handle me. And I'm sure they just jumped on him and give him hugs and kisses, all of them. All of them. So this is a very interesting thing, that Jesus is not recognizable outside, although he is appearing and everywhere, but he's not recognizable. Nobody could really tell. Once they recognize him outside, he is gone. But in the upper room, he is recognizable, touchable, handleable, you, you, you name it. Everything you want to do with him is there. And he's telling them, here is the signs. The holes, touch the holes if you want. Then Thomas was not there. And Thomas came and they, everybody told him, we saw him, we touched him. But when is Thomas going to see the Lord? They wait Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then on Sunday, again, St. John said today, the doors were shut. Again, these are words that have some meaning, some importance, that he has to describe to us that the doors were closed. And then, all of a sudden, Jesus appears in the middle again. And this time, he addresses them with the same greeting. In this chapter, this greeting was said three times. Peace to you. This is the most that Jesus had said peace to you in the whole Gospels in one chapter, three times. He would say peace to you maybe when he comes walking on the water or something. But this is three times in one chapter. If you translate this in, uh, in, in Greek, I say the, the Gospel written in Greek, what would it sound like? What would that be? In Greek, you all know it. Irini Pasi. Irini Pasi, peace to you. And also with your spirit. So he said this, and then he said to Thomas, come here. You want to see? Come and see. You want to handle? You said you wanted to believe, so that you want to put your fingers? Come here and put your fingers. Handle me. I am here. What day was that? Sunday. Where? What is the place? The upper room. What's the upper room? It's the first church. This is where Jesus actually took his body and broke it and said, take eat. This is my body. Take drink, this is my blood. This is the same place he made the first Eucharist. This is the same place that the Holy Spirit will descend. It is a special place and a special time. Sunday, in the church, where he appears, not on any other day, but it doesn't deprive us from the blessing of Jesus being with us every single day outside that church, but not in a recognizable form. We believe he's here. I believe that he's with me in the work. I believe he is with me in the, in the, on the road as I drive and I go to the marketplace 
But to be able to see him, handle him, touch him, come very close to him and be intimate, it's got to be somewhere special. That's what these events are about. So the apostles are writing to us to tell us something very important. Now let's go back and, and review something that, about this story. One, why would Jesus, I mean, he's risen from the dead. Okay, if you have this experience, you've been through hell and back, and you've been mutilated and beaten, and now you're given a new nature, a new nature that can actually time travel, space travel. You can just only think about where you want to go and you will be there. You don't have doors and, and locks and bolts doesn't bother you. You don't need any to deal with them at all. Why would you take from your attention, not even time, because there is no time, we're outside time, attention to seek people by the tomb? I know for sure that Mary Magdalene doesn't have this visit from Christ. I don't think she would have left the tomb until she died. That's how close she was, and how, she eager, how eager she was. How about uh, the two disciples of Emmaus? Now oh, they have some errand to do. They said the story is finished. We're done. Let's go and get up about our business. Let's get away from here. Just change scenery. I need to breathe. It's suffocating. Uh, the Jews are just on our necks. Why do you need to bother with them? It's very interesting. Why would Jesus go to catch them as they're going out and bring them back? Why he goes to Mary Magdalene and bring her back? Because he wants all of them to be where? In, in the church. That tells me how significant this is. From that time on, Jesus is going to establish that church. And he's telling all of us, every time, you want to taste me, you want to touch me, you want to handle me, come and eat communion. I am there. I'm going to be with there physically. You, I'm going to be with you everywhere you are, because I made that promise. But to, for you to see me, and to handle me, and to touch me, and to take me inside of you, this will be on, in the church on Sunday. From that time on, you read the book of Acts and you understand. The word breaking bread became the sign of the church. In Acts 20, I think 19 or 20, it begins with this. When the disciples, disciples he's mean Christians, gathered together at the first of the, of the week, at the beginning of the week, to break bread. That's how they did it. The beginning of the week is the day you break bread as Jesus had done. And we give it to each other and then take the, the body of Christ. This is what the apostles have been doing all along in the book of Acts and continued in the church till today. Jesus is not only for one generation. Jesus is for all generations. Jesus is not only available for the apostles. He's available for all of us. That's why it's very hard for me to understand. If somebody understood this and, and really grasped it, to give any excuse to be outside the church on the day of the liturgy. What kind of excuse I will give in front of seeing Jesus doing all what he had done to begin this way and to make it this way? What kind of excuse? Although he's very gentle, by the way. He is extremely gentle. He's a gentle Lord. He doesn't rebuke anybody. He just go to them, walk with them, and then make them make a U-turn. Go to Mary Magdalene, show himself, and tell her, let's go back to the upper room. And then at night on Sunday... He appears to everybody. On the next Sunday, he appears to, to, to everybody. He waits for Thomas. And I always wonder, why don't you go and catch Thomas somewhere? Maybe he's in the grocery store buying some food. Maybe he has gone on a business trip or something. Why do you wait for him to come on Sunday? Because he's not going to do that. He's going to have Thomas to go back to the church to show himself. That's what this Sunday is about. Jesus established the church. Please don't listen don't listen to anybody who tells you that Jesus is interested in a personal relationship away from the church. That is nonsense. The Gospels never spoke about that, never told that. He is a personal Lord, but within the church. He is your Lord and, and the lover of your kind and the lover of your life and story, but within the church. He's going to give you full love there in the church, but you take him with you and go everywhere where you want. Don't go without him. That's what this story of love is about. Therefore, I'd say just savor that love. 
appreciate it. And every time you come to take communion, understand that Jesus had done all what he could to bring us all together so that we can be partaking of this one loaf of bread. As St. Paul says, we all partake of this one loaf of bread, which is the body of the Lord. To him is the glory with his good Father and Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen.